Aloha, I come in the name of the Lord. What we're going to be discussing here is about the atonement for wickedness and about giving you a idea about the time that we're in, yeah? Um, with the atonement for wickedness, it's one of the six things that was given to the Gentiles to fulfill in the allotted time that was given to the Gentiles to empower them for paths of peace, yeah? And with the atonement for wickedness, um, what you have to understand when that comes to that is it's by truth and it's by mercy that wickedness is atoned for, yeah? And to atone for something, that's just to do some to make something right because something had been done wrong, yeah? You're just trying to bring two things in peace, and that's how you unify things, yeah? With the atonement for wickedness. Um, it's by mercy and truth that wickedness is atoned for, yeah? It's by a loving devotion and faithfulness, yeah? And as you know, mercy trumps judgment and God desires mercy, not sacrifice, yeah? Sacrifice is love. And so with the atonement for wickedness, for uh, the fulfillment of... For those who are Gentiles, those who have been given the light of the gospel so that you know the truth, yeah? you ha It has been given to you this whole entire time so that it could grow, yeah? It is now for you in the renewing of your mind to expand in the knowledge of Christ, yeah? And not get stuck in the elementary principles that have been already tested and required throughout this entire time, Yeah? You, got, you already know about repentance and about faithfulness in God and all that stuff, yeah? About laying on our hands and the resurrection of the dead. All those stuff that's elementary, yeah? In order to atone for wickedness, you have to have the expansion of the renewal of the knowledge of Jesus Christ and the expansion and renewal of the knowledge of Christ in you. The mystery that is not so much of a mystery to us who know the truth, yeah? And the reason why... The atonement for wickedness is so that you could practice, so you could live in peace during the times that are coming after the allotment of the Gentiles is over, yeah? There are things that you're supposed to, we're supposed to fulfill, and if it hasn't been fulfilled in this allotment of time, it will still be fulfilled, but without the freedom and peace that we have been given and that grace that we have been given this entire time in order to do it yeah and so to atone for wickedness what it is is you're you're forgiving yeah people and you are showing mercy and not judgment yeah you are literally following every single command because you love god yeah you don't love yourself and you don't love the power that has come with the freedom that is in christ you love god and so therefore you obey his command and how he has set it up is that when it comes to the times that are not going to be peaceful for us in order to try to finish transgression and have, make an end to sin and atone for wickedness and bring in an everlasting righteousness sealing of vision and prophecy and anointing the most holy place yeah uh without that peace then uh those things will be literally impossible for you because you will be dull to the righteousness that comes in the glory of the covenant that we're under in the freedom of Christ and under the law of grace yeah um it has been given to us to be able to go in peace to do things that before in our elementary immature spiritual phase was a definite no 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 don't do that yeah this is wrong and this is right and we have to do this in order to be not of the world yeah those things you have to push aside yeah knowledge passes away yeah because the love for those things have already went innate, which it means it disappears, yeah? And it's written on your mind and on your hearts, yeah? And if you believe everything that God has said 
and you truly do love him and are obeying his commands, then you then give God what he does requires or desires, which is mercy, and you know that your sins are forgiven, yeah? In one day, your sins are forgiven, and it will no longer, no, none of your transgressions or any of your sins will be remembered no more, yeah? Then you are ushered into what is the Sabbath rest, yeah? The Sabbath rest of God, where you finish your works, and everything that you do for God is no longer an obligation because you feel it is your duty, because you have put trust and faith in what God has said, and your neighbor no longer has to ask anybody, do you know the Lord, yeah? Because they all will know him, as he has said, and is fulfilled. And in that, everyone's prophesying, yeah? From the least to the greatest, from the slave to the free. So therefore, prophecy is impartial, and so if prophecy is to edify the church, yeah, and it's for believers, yet there is comes a there will come a time where you must seal up all vision and prophecy, yeah, by the word of God, then what is it that you choose to do? Yeah? You do what is right to God, not to yourself. Yeah, not to the church. You do what is right to God. That's how you know you truly love him because you will do everything that he has commanded. And in that sense, then you can love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, give to those who have stolen from you. Yeah, um, go the extra mile when someone's dragging you along where you don't want to go. Yeah, uh, turn the other cheek. Um, Overcome evil with good. Be ready for good works to all people with no discriminations. Yeah? Obey ruling authorities and governing parties in this time because they have been placed there by God, who is the one and only authority that you serve. Yeah? That you believe in. That you know. And so it's those certain things that then you have to push aside your man mind and your uh, basic elementary uh, spiritual principles and go into the maturity which is then by faith yeah so that through that faith you become the righteousness of God someone who is eager to do good works yeah it's no it's not an obligation yeah you don't feel like oh I need to do these things because God has said you do it because you're free to do it and that's what you love and adore yeah and so that's the atoning for wickedness. It's not to go out and make excuses for the wicked, but it's for you to understand and trust that it is God who justifies the ungodly and not yourself, yeah? So therefore, whatever you do with the faith and foundation that you're set in, that it's God who justifies the ungodly, not you, and that you are a servant, yeah? And you are kind to everybody including your enemies yeah and those who you think are you're supposed to be fighting against including the devil yeah including things like that yeah you then justify that it's god who justifies the ungodly and therefore everything you do from then there from henceforth is in righteousness of god and it's credited to you as righteousness yeah and that is an everlasting righteousness. That's why there's a freedom in Christ. And if you're free in Christ, why do you live as if you're under a law? Don't touch, don't, you know, don't smell, don't taste, don't look or whatnot. Yeah. If you see you're free, why are you acting like you're not free? And then also don't use that freedom as an excuse to sin. Yeah. Because sin will come through you. Yeah. You will never be without sin. There's an end to that sin. But yeah. If you say that you have not sinned, then you're a liar and the truth is not in you. And if you say that you have no sin, then you don't know God, yeah? Everyone has sin, but then you already understand. And also through the videos that was made prior about the end to sin and understanding that he who had no sin, he who knew no sin, was made to be the sin for you and about what the body and the flesh 
yeah, is. So therefore, when it says, no flesh can glory in the presence of God, suddenly, with that new creation, even your flesh can hope. Even your flesh has hope, yeah? These are fulfillments of the word living in you and being justified correctly in the maturity, yeah? That comes when you're the righteousness of God, which is everlasting righteousness. And so the atonement for wickedness is to allow people who are wicked to continue being wicked, yeah? Allow whoever's doing good to do good. Allow them to do it, yeah? And by that, you're showing mercy, giving God what he wants, yeah? Not sacrifice, which is love. And what you do is then your heart and your mind is guarded in peace because he has left us with his peace, yeah? His peace he gave to us. He did not give us his love. He did not say, I leave my love with you, yeah? My love I give to you. His love is greater than you can understand, but what we're capable of knowing and what we can have is called perfect love, which casts out all fear, yeah? And you can only know that is if he has loved you first, yeah? Yeah, you can only love because God has loved you first. Yeah, and those who have love has been born of God. If someone claims that they know God yet has hate for their brother, yeah, then they are still in the dark. Yeah, they don't know what makes them stumble because they're blind in that. Yeah, they're, they stumble around in the dark and they don't know what makes them blind. Uh, there's a type of myopia that can, comes with that because they have lost touch with the head. And the reason that happens is because if you continuously go back to the old covenant and to the elementary principles that we have already known, a veil and a dulling comes that blocks you in regard to the power and the glory of the new covenant that is in Jesus Christ, that is in Christ. Yeah? The very will of God. It dulls you. And so you go... Uh, dark yeah you go dull and what you are proclaiming as so such a significant light is not a light at all yeah uh you're not leading anyone anywhere because you don't even understand what makes you stumble and that's why certain things have been given to us to fulfill so that there can be a maintenance of that peace that surpasses all understanding and the peace that he has left with us yeah and then the command was given about if you to love your brother yeah if you love me you must love your brother yeah and if you love me and obey my command then the love of God is made perfect in you yeah perfect and when you continuously do that you are bringing everything into unity in Christ yeah as you know those in Christ there's no longer Jew or Gentile or male or female or you're over here and I'm over here all is one in Christ, including you, yeah? And so that is what the atonement for wickedness is about, yeah? It's so that you could bring peace to those who are outstanding in wickedness and that you are given the power in heavenly places and given the, the, the power and the leeway to do it, yeah? It's not a sin. It's, you're not gonna be having a guilty feeling because you feel like, oh my gosh, I should have told that person, no, don't do that because that is wicked or whatnot, or oh, you can't get married or you can't uh, be putting up your altar next to our nativity scene because you're the devil and we're not the devil and we're for God and you're against God, yeah? Uh, it gives you the freedom to not only let them, yeah, and to allow it, but if you want to, to even offer in help willingly out of love and thanksgiving to God because it will glorify God, yeah? It's stuff like that. And the reason why these peace measures need to be fulfilled in you is because at the end of a certain allotment of time, if these things are not fulfilled in you, then you will not be able to fulfill them in peace. It will be forced upon you, yeah? You will have to, right quick, be justified. And it's not a pleasant thing to fall into the hands of the living God, yeah? And so where we are now, just so that you can have an understanding of the times, is at the end of 62, 
yeah? And when I say that, it's to do with Daniel, yeah? And at the end of the 62 is when the anointed one is cut off and is given nothing and the people of the ruler come and trample over the sanctuary and the holy city and all that stuff, yeah? The anointed one is cut off. And so that's where we're closing out right now, which is then going to have one more of the final 70 out of 7, yeah? It's going to have one more seven, which is going to be a covenant with many people in the middle of that seven. The uh, daily sacrifice will be cut off or told to stop or abolished or whatever. And then an abomination will be set up at the corner of the temple and the wing of the temple. Yeah. And then until the end that is poured out on the person to do this is accomplished and decreed or whatnot. Yeah. And so with the end of the 62 and the anointed one being cut off and the trampling of the sanctuary you now understand that it's going to come into terms with the power of the holy people being given over to the enemy in order to overcome overcome the holy people of god yeah and why would god do that yeah there's a huge there's a bigger reason for the plan which is inclusive of everybody unity yeah a unifying of everything in Christ including Christ that we can see now yeah and back then they could not see because they could not see everything that was under his feet but they saw Jesus just as we saw Jesus but we have been given much more than them and they long to know what we know and hear what we hear and understand what we understand. They belonged to the wise men and kings of the past have longed to know what we know. And here we are knowing it, yeah? And so with uh, the trampling of the sanctuary, yeah? This is going to have to do with the buildings, yeah? Not the church spiritual body yeah at this time you have to understand who you are you are your body is a temple yeah trust jesus when he said yeah no stone will be i will destroy this temple and in three days build it up and they did not understand he was speaking about his body yeah the church is his body you are a temple of the living god you are being built up in Christ yeah yeah you're on the stone you're on the stone that when all the other stones are being knocked off and shaken you will not be shaken yeah you can build up in Christ yeah that's who you are it's not the congregation yeah this congregation has done its part in the immaturity yeah in the elementary I should say things of repentance and laying on of hands and the practice between like-minded believers yeah to uh practice their faith and practice the, and grow together in their knowledge in grace of god yeah but those things are of the world and you have to understand that god is one yeah the lord our god he is one and God should not be, the divine God, the divine power should not be thought of in images and things made from the imaginations of men, yeah? Uh, these things are now going to turn into what is a stumbling block against your very faith, yeah? And with the faith that you have acquired is what you use in order to become the righteousness of God because it comes through faith, yeah? And that righteousness of God will then redeem you into being the holy people of God, yeah? An everlasting righteousness. You'll be credited. Everything is forgiven. You are of Abraham, pretty much, yeah? You are of that, that promise. You are uh, justified correctly into the Abraham and Isaac, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the living, not the dead, yeah? Uh, the everlasting life um, and stuff like that uh, those things 
have done their part and their duty, yeah? But now it's become an inhibitor to your faith and you have to learn to let go of the things that is highly valued to men, yeah? This includes you, the Gentiles, yeah? Or the other people, not the not of the Jews or not of the old people of God or whatever, yeah? Uh, those things must be taken out of the way, yeah? That's why even the mystery of lawlessness is coming into effect because that has been taken out of the way because the light of the gospel which has been shown to the Gentiles, yeah, which is the light of life, which is the new covenant, which is almost the same as the old covenant, but founded on better promises and has everlasting things, yeah, uh, has been given to us. The light of the gospel is now going to be shown to those who are on the other side who are cut off. And we know about those people. They were, they were the ones along the path that when the gospel was sown, they had no chance to it, yeah, so that they could turn around and be forgiven. They had no chance. The, the devil would come and snatch it from their heart, snatch the seed from their heart, yeah? We know this about the parable of the sower, yeah? Uh, so they had no chance. Now they're giving, being given a chance, yeah, as the times that was allotted to the Gentiles, which is a long time, yeah, is now tampering away, yeah? It's it's uh, fulfilling to the end. Um, and when that happens, then that power of the light of the gospel will then be impartial because God is impartial in everything, yeah? He wouldn't do anything when someone else didn't have a chance and this one had a chance, yeah? That's not God. There's a unity and there is an impartiality and an evening which God loves, yeah? Just weights and measures. And so when the light of the gospel becomes impartial, that's when the anointed one is cut off and has nothing, yeah? And so then you have to understand that if you are of the anointed one, yeah, who is Jesus Christ, yeah, Jesus is the anointed. Jesus of Nazareth is the anointed one, yeah? He is to be cut off and have nothing, and when I say Jesus of Nazareth is the anointed one, yeah, you have to understand at the cross, yeah, of repentance where the forgiveness of sins, yeah, that's where the law stops and it stayed, yeah, because he's alive with you. He's alive with you, yeah. You can leave the dead body at the, at where death is outside, yeah. Uh, that's not where you belong. You have already known this and others can come through. And they can know about that forgiveness of sins, yeah, and the repentance and come to that waters of repentance. Because for us who have known about the repentance and the forgiveness of sins, it is now drawing up, yeah? That's why at certain times it says, you know, uh, living water, springs of living water will come issuing out of them. Uh, there is no sea in the revelations or whatever. There was no sea, yeah? Um uh, there's a you know, river of life that everybody can drink from that comes from the temple of God, stuff like that, yeah? But the living water is in you, yeah? It should flow in you. And so even if you're cut off, you understand that your most holy place, which is behind the curtain, which is no longer for you who know the truth, yeah? That Jesus has gone in before and anchored there and then he stands in our presence for us, yeah? He is with you as the forever high priest. But when he comes down, because he is there for the world, he will no longer be a priest. And those who have the um, everlasting righteousness and have fulfilled all those six things up to the anointing of the most holy place, yeah, that stays with you so that you become a priest, yeah, because you are a priesthood and a royal nation, or a royal priesthood and a holy nation. To God, he has made you kings and priests, yeah, the most high, the holy people of the most high, the servants of the most high, yeah? That's how you become a priest, even though you're not of an, any type of order or you're not born into it, yeah? And even if you're anointed as of the old order, you're cut off because you're not a priest, yeah? However, as you know, Melchizedek, or what's his name? Yeah, Melchizedek, he is the... Uh, king of Salem, which is the king of peace, yeah, or the king of righteousness. Um, that's why there is an establishment of the throne of justice in righteousness, yeah? 
and righteousness is your scepter. You love righteousness, you hate wickedness, and therefore you're anointed with oil, yeah? And when I say you hate wickedness, you have to understand then what righteousness is, the maturity, yeah? You need to understand what is wicked and what is not wicked, yeah? And a lot of things that we have said is wicked is not wicked, yeah? Yet we make them wicked because of what, how we're saying it. And that's why you have to understand, like just for example, even about marriage, it tells us allow everyone to get married, yeah? Back in the day, maybe in an old covenant or law, it said only marriage between a man and woman because they've become one in God, yeah? We are a new creation with a new covenant. We are of the new creation, yeah? You have come through Christ. You are in Christ. You are a new creation. Out goes the old. Behold the new. And if you cannot believe that, it's already written for us to stand on. Allow marriage for everybody because God's going to be the judge of what happens in that marriage. Yeah, not you. But you must be obedient to God if you love him and allow it. That's just an example. Why is it so hard for then for the church or anybody who is proclaiming that they are of the love of God, a workman of God, a workman of righteousness, all this stuff, to, in the same breath, deny anybody else marriage. Understand this. If you cannot understand that marriage must be allowed by everybody to understand how you can get married to the spirit, the spirit in you can get married, and yet you allow a lamb and a woman building to get married, yeah, and that's what you believe in in Revelations, a lamb like an animal married to a, a bride woman building, yeah, then you're kind of screwed up, yeah? You're already on a double standard. That's why allow marriage so that marriage can be allowed in you and it will be God who justifies, yeah, and, the God, and God who will judge it, yeah? Now, I'm telling this in the universal sense so that everyone can understand, yeah? I'm not... For those of you who hear this and you know who you are as one of the beloved, one of those who have been made for this time, you, you have literally been made since the begin before the creation of the world, yeah? To be the first, a type of first fruits in order to do these things, yeah? Then you go in peace and you do what you know because you already know, yeah? The, you have the anointing. The truth is in you, so you know the truth, yeah? It's not a counterfeit anointing like many people have claimed because that's not. Because what the anointing will allow you to do is not only to know what they all know and not only to know what all the scholars in this field know, but also give you the grace and the uh, easiness in the renewing of your mind when it all flips and the wisdom flips and the schemes of the knowledgeable flip for you not to be shaken and you won't fall, yeah? Because you know the truth, yeah? Because I'm telling you right now, it is for us to take away everything that we have learned in the moral and ethical sense, yeah? And then judge righteously in peace, so that you bring peace, not judgment, peace, mercy. You atone for wickedness, yeah? Uh, and when it comes to you and the world, you should not be speaking anything to the world. You should be speaking only within your, what you, the group of your faith, yeah? Because why would you speak anything to the world? You are not part of the world. And it is the family of God that is judged first. And therefore, we will judge the family of God, which is going to be the church, yeah? We will judge each other. We will uh, Those who have been given authority will judge you by the very words that you have spoken. And it is going to be not by their own word, but by the very word that has been given to you by our Father. Yeah, but that has been given to us. The very word he, speak, he has spoken will be the words that condemn you because you haven't believed and didn't want to be saved or have denied the power that is in this amazing concept of peace for the entirety of the world 
first for you, then for them, and then first it was for them, now it's for you. Yeah? It's like that. And so, understand atoning for wickedness, yeah, is something that can be fulfilled. And as we go along, it will come up to why there's a sealing of the vision and the prophecy so that, as you know, if everyone can prophesy, then how do you discern between the true prophets and the false prophets, yeah? Because the true prophets are, only, are going to have the spirit of truth with them. And they bear the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy, yeah? They're not going to be going all over the place into the old law and whatnot. They could only to uh, ascribe spiritual matters, yeah, into certain detailings so that those who are being given the light of the gospel, I want to say the Jews, yeah, or anybody else, the unbelief, whoever was not able to get influenced by the seed of the gospel, yeah, uh, so that they can understand it's going to be for their sake, yeah, not for the church's sake. Um, uh, whatever the case may be, I forgot what I was talking about. Uh, there's a righteousness that you have to abide by, which is going to be then a maturity in the spirit, yeah? Oh, the sealing of a vision and prophecy. It is the testimony of Jesus, yeah? And that's why, as it goes to the end, it says, and those who held to the testimony of Jesus. You have to understand what the testimony of Jesus is, yeah? It's not uh, just the basics, yeah? It should be growing. It, sh it grows. It's living and active, yeah? And it will judge the divisions of your heart, soul and spirit, yeah? Joint and marrow. And it is by your hearing that is the measure of how you can listen, yeah? And so... When it comes to the sealing up of vision and prophecy, those who are told by the spirit of what it is told by the father who can only know, is the only one who knows what is to come, yeah? And will tell those, his servants, yeah? His servants, uh, what is yet to come, they might not speak, they might not tell, not because they don't want to, it's because there's a sealing up of vision and prophecy. And therefore, what they will share is nothing to do with visions or prophecy, but just as commanded what it sees the Father doing, that's what it will do, and that's what it will tell, yeah? and that's what it will show. Um, and so that's how the elect will not be deceived by any of the great power that has been given over to those who are false by God in order to initiate certain things into the fulfillments that is to come, yeah? Um, but if it's only the elect, yeah, that aren't going to be deceived, that means everyone else will be deceived. That's why it's very important, going back to the peace, yeah, that has been given to us and the fulfillments of these things that will give us peace so that you have more than what Noah and Lot had. Yeah, the times of Noah, the times of Lot, it was very, uh, uh, what's that called? Uh, Nerve-wracking or whatever for someone with a righteous soul to live in the time of lawless men and lawless deeds. Yeah, you can understand that. But we have more. We have been given the peace of Jesus by Jesus. He left us with his peace. Yeah, so that our righteous souls, yeah, aren't, aren't going to be tormented by the lawless acts and lawless deeds because we're under grace and righteousness. Yeah, and there's an understanding of impartiality. There's no, there's no uh, boasting in a fact that oh, I know this and I know that. It's you're a servant. Yeah, you are a servant, and you are the least. And when I say the least, it doesn't mean that it means you are just doing the bare the bare minimum. You're doing minimum, yet what is come out of it is everything. Yeah, everything has been revealed to me everything yeah and i i know it but i what i'm doing now is sharing what i know because it's right yeah and it's a good it's good it's a good work 
to, uh, to do because there's a, everybody seems to be more and more getting lost <laughs> uh, and dull and becoming dull, yeah? Um, but I do it because because I can. Not because I, I have to, yeah? It's not an obligation for me to do this. In fact, I knew about this for a, a while now and it's only now that I'm sharing just this one part because I was weighing, weighing it out in, righteous, in righteousness. Like, is it beneficial, constructive? Because everything's permitted, yeah? And with everybody talking, should I do this? But yes, I should. And so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> um, so mercy, yeah? Mercy and truth, it will atone for the iniquity, yeah? And then understand righteousness, yeah? It's the maturity, so more solid food, not just spiritual milk, yeah? Um, and everything that has been given to us and commanded by not only the Lord, but the apostles and his servants that has been written has given us every single shape, form, and way to be at peace and to forgive even past the 70, yeah, even past the allotment of time. That's why Jesus said, don't forgive 70, but 77 times because even after our allotment is done, there's still going to be times at the end and then the end times, yeah, because now the light will uh, be able to grow in those who can be justified at the heart, who have a noble heart, yeah, and um, grow in them, that they too can come through. And of course, like I said, it's unity, yeah? It's all one in Christ. There's no longer, oh, this Jew came over to be a Christian, or this Christian uh, is a prophet. It's, you're all one in Christ, yeah? And blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. And those who sow in peace reap harvests of righteousness. Righteousness is not righteous, yeah? There's no one who is righteous, but if you can be anointed by the righteous one, yeah, and you have the knowledge expanding in the renewing of the mind so that more is given to you, more things can be seen, which is not seen, yeah? Because the natural comes first and the spiritual comes first, comes second, yeah, Come, or comes after. Um, then you will be righteous. You are righteous in his sight, even though you know that you're not because you're a righteousness and you're a servant. You could be sons, but you are a servant, yeah? You could be kings, but you are a servant. You are a servant. You won't be anything other than a servant. That should not be coming out of, and that should, the only thing should be coming out of someone's mouth who is trying to say that they are the chosen people or they are here to do I don't know, rule, rule over things or whatever. Uh, by what they say, I know who they are, yeah? But those of the Most High are servants. They're, it's just plain and simple. You were just a servant, yeah? You're not, you're a servant. Anyway, um, so I come in the name of the Lord and I will finish up just up until the times of the Gentiles. And then whoever has any questions or reaches out with any questions, I will give. I will give. Yeah, asking it will be given to you. And so I come in the name of the Lord and take care. Thank you.